and welcome back to the Demis Helen channel and this is my video on the top five secret tips that I have for you for trance arpeggios. So this is not just limited to trance arpeggios, you can apply this to other genres and other areas of your plucks, leads, melodies, all that good stuff in music production. So my first secret to a good trance arpeggio is the pattern. Now you need to have something memorable in your track. You want it to stand out a little bit more. And yes, we all sort of recycle these patterns, but we can make them into our own still. So avoiding simple patterns such as a three note riser, Now you can make that interesting if you want to, and they're great for intros and outros and supporting sections, but you don't want that to be the main focus of your track. So the first pattern that I'm gonna show you here is this one, and we're gonna solo this particular sound. All three sounds are from my own packs. These two are from my upcoming Anna 2 Transplux pack. That'll be out by the end of this month of October. So if you want to see that, you can subscribe to my mailing list on the website, link in the description. And then the third sound is from June 3 Transleads, and that is available on the website right now. So we're starting off with that first one and you can hear it's an interesting rhythm, but it's a very stable one at that. And that is a good thing. Uh, you don't have to go all out and manic about it, but that particular pattern, if we have a look at this, we can see here that we've got, let's just solo this bar here. And you can see here, we're using a dotted rhythm here in eighth notes, and then we are using the same again above, but offset by one sixteenth. And that gives us a nice stable, but interesting rhythm. And you can keep that going across that same pace across two bars if you wanted to. You can see I've ended it after one and just sort of doubled these up. So we get a nice um, sort of interruption to the flow. The second pattern that I've got for you here sort of emphasizes this particular melodic sequence, but starts to arpeggiate it a little bit more in a sort of linear fashion, but it gives you a few more options for changing notes and making a few more interesting sections. So it keeps some pace and we've got some nice bass notes in there sort of triggering where our mid basses would be and everything else that sort of supports the melodies. Now with this one, it is more of a riser. So if we look at this first bar here, we've got a bass note. So we're starting on the beat. These are in 16s. And then we have, let's just put this into the correct key, which I think is D sharp minor. There we are. So you can see here, we're going from D sharp, D sharp. So we're doubling up on the two D sharps. And then it's just a three note riser after that. So four notes in total from the bass note. And I'm just going through the scale there. You can choose whatever notes that you need to in your scale or whatever you want it to be. But you can see it rises up and just leaks into the next beat of that bar. So then we can start that off in the middle. So we're sort of offsetting. So starting on the bar, off beat on the bar, and then starting on the bar, but we end it abruptly to introduce the next section. So we don't get that final note overlapping. So we can go around back in a circle. It sort of interrupts the flow and gives it a nice pace. And finally, a simple pattern, but with a more sort of sophisticated top end. Thank you. 
And just quickly, if you want these MIDI patterns in their entirety, you can get them on my Patreon page. If you're a subscriber on there, you can get access to them early. You probably already got them. And um, But if you're not, you can get access to that for the lowest tier. I think it's $2 a month. You can get that tier and obviously get everything back catalog as well from other videos and other releases that are not on my website. So the second secret tip for trans arpeggios is thinking about thickness, thinness, texture, reverb, delay, all those good things and how you want them to be integrated into your sound. So I'm going to show you three separate sounds, two from my Anna 2 Plux pack, which is out at the end of October. Don't forget to subscribe to the mailer if you want to see the release of that. And June 3 my Centurion lead. So three very different sounds here. So let's have a listen to the first, very familiar already. So that's my thin sound. is my thicker sound but it's still a pluck so it's quite short but it's got more texture it's got more voices more detune in there and a lot more delay and a bit of reverb on there so it's thicker it's bigger than the first one which is quite thin and nasally and then third and final is my full of thick texture which is my lead and this is a lot softer so these two take over the transients this one takes over the body and the drive and power <laughs> So what I want you to take away from this is to understand timbre and texture and have a wide variety of sounds at your disposal. So if you're not a sound designer yourself, invest in some good preset packs. Link in the description to my website where I sell you the sounds individually. If you only need plucks, you can buy them. If you only need leads, you can buy them as well across many synths, including Vital. So Which leads me on to the third secret tip for trans arpeggios, which is layering. So we've covered that we've got a thin, a sort of thicker textured sound, and then a really big beefy sound for the final one. So layering is a huge, huge part in trans arpeggios. If you want them to sound memorable, sound big, sound full of life, then this is what you need to think about. All together, we are gonna get a wonderful cacophony of sound. take one of these away you'll hear sort of the presence of certain elements disappear and it will become a little bit weaker. Have a listen to the second one for context. So you can see I've made these to work all together and if you take one of them away a certain element disappears from it and you don't hear the details coming through. So what I'm trying to say there is don't try to make one sound do everything. Have a blend of sounds. Have three at least and practice around with different timbres. And the best thing is with my Anna 2 pack, for example, if we load this up, 
I give you three, well, four macros, but one of them will always be a dry signal macro. So you can turn off the internal effects because we're running internal effects for this particular tutorial to make way for your own third party effects. Everything is coming straight out the synth with no processing other than one thing. Which leads me on to secret tip number four, which is simple effects chains. So let's take a look at my effects chain that I've got on here. This is out of context. There's no track involved with this, but a good starting point for all sort of like leads and plucks and arpeggio sequences is to do very simple processing. Just get it going, get it sounding juicy, and then we can tweak that as the rest of the track comes. So let's take a look. These are all being fed into a trans leads and plucks group down here. And if we take a look at that group, I've got an instance of OTT, so you can follow along at home, and TD on over, so you can follow along at home as well. So let's turn these off. Let's automate these. So you can see two things happening there and then it sounds huge. So bearing in mind, the effects are coming from the synths themselves. So as the presets are loaded, this is what they sound like. I haven't put any third party delay, reverb or anything like that. So just assume that is my effects chain. I've already got a reverb and delay in there. And then an instance of OTT has been placed on here. And that is just literally boosting all of the reverb and the delay, everything that sort of what I call wet effects, delay, reverb, things that make everything sound huge and more complex. And finally, tip number five, you'll have heard this a million times, and that is EQ, and not to go absolutely nuts with it. So on this channel, we are obviously processing all of the leads at the same time. And if you take a look at my TDR Nova, you can see there is not anything going on apart from a low cut. Now the low cut is just to tidy up some of the lower frequencies that we don't need because we want the sub and the bass to sort of occupy that area. But we don't want to isolate the lead so much that the trans arpeggio sounds thin and disconnected from your track. So the best way for this, in my opinion, is to have a 6 dB slope, a 6 dB roll off on here. So it's nice and gentle and it's still letting some of those lows come through. And then you can tidy them up later if you need to. But it's always a good starting point, especially when you're out of context and you're just sort of developing a lead pattern. Now, with this, you can see I've gone for 134 hertz. That's not a special number. It's not me being very precise. That is me just bringing it up to a level where the leads are starting to sound a little bit cleaner, but not too thin. So let's have a listen to when we move this about. So I'm going to bring it down to around 20 hertz. You can hear we're going too far now, starting to sound thin and nasally. And now you can hear we've gone too far and we're just getting that top end coming through and it's starting to sound crispier. So about 188 sounds acceptable as well. And you can see it doesn't leak into the bass territory. It's sort of like 20 to 50, depending on the track that you're working on as well, that is. So just one final thing with that. This has got a little bit more low ending and I'll demonstrate the EQ with this one. So we've gone way too far here at 600 hertz. Mm -hmm. 
And about 200 hertz sounds quite nice. You've still got the low end coming through, but not too much that it's dominating, giving space for your kick and your bass. And like I say, this is a good starting point, but make extra tweaks if needed when it comes to the actual mix down. So there you have it. That is my five top secret trans arpeggio tips for you to try at home to get better, bigger and more detailed sounds. So with that said, if you did enjoy the video, you know exactly what to do and you know exactly what to do if you want to see more of my videos in the future. And with that said, thank you very much for watching and I will look forward to seeing you all in the next video. Take care.